Welcome to another edition of Inlandia Literary Journeys. We have actually journeyed over to the Riverside Art Museum where we're talking with photographer Doug McCullough and we're also here with Katie Porter of Inlandia Institute. And Doug, you and Susan Strait teamed up and have this great exhibit uh, featuring some of the most significant uh, periods in Riverside's history. You know what, this is like a, it's kind of a love story to the east side. That's the way Susan, Susan puts it. So for me, I'm a photographer, I travel all over the world, but this was like sort of walk to the end of your own block in a way, in your own community, and then find this giant cosmos you didn't even really know existed. Interlocking stories, interlocking families, interlocking narratives. It's just rich and wonderful. It's just fantastic, actually. And what are you going to show us first? Um, I thought what we would do is start with the very first photograph taken, which is of Daisy Carter's house, and happens luckily to be right behind us here. Um, very, very early in the morning in December in 2011, I got a phone call from Susan Strait. And this house that is on the east side, right across from Bobby Bonds Park on Kansas and 11, completely burned that night. There was a quinceaneros and there was a huge fire. The house was like a hub on the east side. It was the home of Daisy Carter and everyone knew this house. She had four beautiful daughters who every man on the east side of a certain age still remember and go, oh my God, those daughters. But on top of it, she being a, essentially a refugee from the south brought family after family after family and they would stay in rooms at this house. And then when they would get their own place, it was like a start point for many people arriving on the east side from the 40s on. Did they refurbish the house after the fire? Or they it is torn down? down. In fact, the photograph behind this, you know, on this other wall right here, are a group of Daisy Carter's descendants, the sons of one of her beautiful daughters, walking across the vacant lot where that house used to be. And it is still a vacant lot. So the fire was about a little year and a half ago or so, and the house is just, it burned so badly that it's just been torn down. By, importantly to the story, is this is Dwayne Sims. So he is the son of Alberta, one of the daughters of Daisy Carter, and that is Susan Strait's husband. So she married into this family. This is actually, you know, she's connected to this community in so many ways, it's unbelievable. So these people are her family. And in that way, she has tremendous kind of entree to, to the east side. She knows the people, she knows the stories. They're her relatives. They're her relatives. This is not outsiders going in. This is local people just, as I said, going down the street and seeing what's there and then trying to capture some of these local stories. So we certainly hope that people from the east side or from Riverside come and visit their own history here in this exhibition. So this is not just about the images, though it is about the stories and Susan Strait is um, intimately involved with these stories. How did you decide to turn this into an exhibition that includes essays by Susan and the images? That, that's a totally great question. This evolved. It started with the fire at Daisy Carter's house and then story led to story led to story until finally there are so many stories that you have to s create a kind of compelling way to mm -hmm. tell them. And so there are layers in this exhibition. There's the layer of images that I took. There are layers of historic images from the people on the east side. And then there are Susan, Susan's beautiful narrative. She's a wonderful writer and you can phone a phone number uh -huh. and hear her tell the story. So you can walk around with your cell phone, you can even borrow one at the front desk and hear the stories. It really is rich and the idea was to create a whole environment. This is not a static exhibit, it's layered. It so is. It's, it's not static, so let's go to the next spot. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, what you're really doing in this is, is fulfilling in Landia's key mission, celebrating the region in word, image, and sound. So here we are with more yeah, images yeah. and another of Susan's 
gorgeous essays. And this is about one of the restaurants on the east side. Yeah, this is, this is one of the, the people, Linda Salinas Thompson, of the many, many people we talked to, called Zacatecas Cafe the Grand Central Station of the east side. And so people, including Susan and I, would just go hang out. We'd have lunch and tell stories. So this entire section is all about Zacatecas. There's story after story after story. One, one that I, is particularly wonderful to me involves this panel right here. This is Robert and Mariko Anderson. In 1969, she was visiting from Japan. She's 21. She'd never been in California before. Friends set them up on a date. Robert, they first went and saw Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid at the Fox Theater. And it was a pretty nice night. So the next night, Robert asked, have you ever had Mexican food? Never had Mexican food. Takes Mariko, Japanese, grew up in Yokohama, to Zacatecas, where the owner of Zacatecas at that time may, said, never had Mexican food. I, we have something on the menu called a special burrito, which they still have. And I will make you a special, special burrito. So he made, and actually two days later, Robert proposed, they're still married. They were here at the opening, standing in front of this photograph. So it's pretty fantastic. Not, not only you know, does love start at, at Zacatecas, but all of these stories kind of crisscross through. It's kind of, I don't know, it's fantastic. That's the idea in this exhibition, is to have interlocking sets of stories from here. And it's more dreamers of the golden dream. How'd that title come about? Yeah, the question is, I, I love this title, More Dreamers of the Golden Dream. That is actually a line from Joan Didion, a Calif great California writer, who wrote a piece years ago about the Inland Empire and uses the phrase, more dreamers of the golden dream, to describe the inhabitants here, meaning it's a California dream and these are some more of the dreamers of that golden dream. An excerpt of that essay is in the Inlandia flagship anthology, so it's uh, integral to this region. Yeah, so it's it's hard to it's hard to resist a title like that. <laughs> that was Susan Strait. She's she's a marvel. If people don't know Susan Strait, then she's got eight novels now, and she's you know National Book Award nominee and so forth. She she's was the a gem. first Inlandia laureate. Yes, indeed, she was Inlandia's first literary laureate. Served a two-year term and. Uh, did a lot of great works during that time, and she's continued to be involved with Inlandia. And uh, I'm very sorry she couldn't be here today, but I hear she's in Canada. Yeah, Prince Edward <laughs> Island. This is not 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 her local turf. That's a good no. that's a good reason not to be here. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Doug and Katie. Well, thank for you. Inlandia Literary Journeys. I'm Press Enterprise Metro Editor John Bender. Be sure to read our column in the paper every Tuesday, and watch our blog localauthors.pe.com.